Boy, there's two quotes that come to mind when, when it comes to this particular subject. The past is never dead and buried. In fact, it's never even passed. And the other is, if you fail to learn the lesson of history, you're doomed to repeat it. Now, what does that have to do with the title in today's video? Quite simply is, that's what we're seeing right now. Now, there's been this quote going around by Judge Joe Brown about the $100,000 woman and the $40,000 guy. That's saying that if the woman is making $100,000, particularly a black woman, is making $100,000 and the guy that she's with is making 40, that that guy that she's with is draining her resources. And either the $100,000 woman needs to start over or basically throw him back and get her another guy or that $40,000 a year guy needs to do better. And as far as the traditional mating and female hypergamy work, that is very true. If you're going to go by those rules, then that's fine. In a perfect world, he would be absolutely correct. Either she gets a guy that's on her level, quote unquote, or in her class, quote unquote, or she gets somebody better. And the man should get a woman that's more suitable to him that's in his class or even lower. Because the old saying is women marry up and men marry down. And in a perfect world, that's probably the way it should work. But what about the two quotes that I just gave at the beginning of this piece? I've been telling all the men here for the last four years that the economy was going to bring the women back. Eventually, the stress on the economy was going to put pressure, a financial pressure on the females, on the women, and they were going to have to make a decision. And that decision was going to bring them back to the table because the competition was going to get fierce. It's going to get extreme. And true to form, which is not rocket science, I don't know why there was any disagreement about this was happening. I'm not a fortune teller. It's human nature. If human nature responds to the environment, the environment changes, the human nature, not human nature, but human behavior will change right along with it, which it did. And the black women's behavior did change predictably. But what was unpredictable, at least to me, at least it was to me until now, is that the radical departure, the radical behavior of the men would change. Because the so-called gender war with the women de-escalated. De-escalated and has virtually disappeared. I mean, you see some hot spots, some skirmishes here or there, but for the most part, it's virtually disappeared. What we now have is a war, a civil war between the men, between the manosphere, or the tatters that's left of the manosphere, which is something I didn't suspect would happen. But looking back at the, the obvious divide that there was back before the women forced us together, I guess once the enemy of my enemy is my friend, no longer applies, people go back to shooting each other like the Hatfields and the McCoys. We know that it is as men. But the thing is, it's only been a year since my prediction or my forecast actually came true. Only been a year. And already, groups of men have forgotten the past. And the old rhetoric is coming back because I think that's all they know. They only have one dance and they have to have a certain music to use their step with. You know, if you, if you do the hustle, you can't play salsa music and dance. Or you can't pay, play Jamaican dance hall and dance to it if you're a stepper. It doesn't work. So this quote by Judge Joe Brown and the women's reaction to it, another thing that I don't understand about it, because women are living this reality. They're living this reality and them reacting to it with, how can I say, well, almost ignorance because you don't look at the numbers, especially in the black community. Now, for most of the wider population, and even for the wider population, those numbers don't particularly exist anymore, especially when we talk about the medians, we talk about the raw numbers and not averages. If you look at the college campuses and the people that get degrees, it's more women, and it has been for the last 40 years, or really 50 years, that more women 
have gotten degrees off colleges, college campuses than men have. And sooner or later, that was going to take its effect, its desired effect. This is not unintentional. Back in the 68, they planned this. Over 50 years ago, they planned this. This is a planned reality. Equity, as they call it, is a policy, not a belief. It's a policy. There is a policy of equity. Feminism was achieved on the backs of black men. For white women and black women to achieve, those jobs and those opportunities had to come from somewhere. This is not an infinite solution. This is very finite, especially after 1971 when we, the United States went off the gold standard. It became finite. The money and the opportunities had to come from somewhere. Where did the money and opportunity come from? It came from taking it from people that couldn't hold on to it themselves. It was taken from black men just as the labor that built this country was taken from the lives of black men. This country has used black men as step stools for 400 years. So you take it away from black men, you give it to white women and you give it a portion of it to black women it is what it is. Okay. That's, that's history that is spilt milk under the bridge. Now you can do about it. Can't get that back. Now that equity, that balance, that white men had, had been, has been shifted because white men have, have basically abandoned the school system. In fact, white men have actually ab abandoned participating in this economy. A lot of them have. So it's not just black men. So now you have these so-called kick-ass women and for our sake, kick-ass black women with no counterpart. You've taken the education, you've taken the opportunities, that, that you've been promoted with. You've taken positions in the corporate world over and above your man. And then you look back and say, where's my counterpart? Where's my partner? Because my man is supposed to be above me. How can he be above you when you stepped on him on your way up? When you stepped on your boys to promote your girls on your way up. What do you think? There's some Negro land where they grow $100,000 dues and just uh, when you get your degree and you get your job and get your career, you just go to Negro Lang and pluck you a $100,000, $200,000 husband? Are you kidding? Black women have always been more educated in this country than black men, always, always. Going back to antebellum slavery, black women have always been more educated. Black men, until recently, were ahead of black women as far as wages are concerned. That is no more. So now what you have is a 50-50 situation, like it or not. And when you look at it, we look at the number of people that make over six figures, it's only about 5% of it's black men, about a little less than 10% of it's all men. Men making over $100,000, people making over $100,000 is about, it's about 9%, give or take, depending on who you ask and where you draw your numbers from, but it's about 9%. When it comes to black men, it's five. When it comes to black men with degrees and $100,000, it's three. So the $100,000 woman has 3% of the men to choose from it, but that man, since being married down, he has 97% of the women to choose from. And since there's more than 2 million more degree holders that are female, that skews the numbers even lower. And the fact that there's two million more black women in the country skews the numbers even more. When you look at it, there's a, there's a million or a million and a half more black women that have jobs than black men. I mean, just plain old jobs. I'm not even talking about $100,000, just plain old jobs. The numbers get thinner. You cry about equity, you cry about competent black men, you cry about you don't have a counterpart, but you let a third of your men go to prison. You let your boys slip from 65, 65% of them being below grade level as far as reading is concerned, or to like 75% of them being what they call functionally illiterate in this society. You allow that, you allow this country to grind them up, and then you get pissed off because there's no counterpart, there's nobody at your level. Of course there's nobody at your level, idiot. You let them get ground into hamburger. And that's just sheer numbers. We're not 
talking about anything. Else. We're just talking about sheer numbers. And that's just black people. What I don't like about so-called black intellectuals, especially the ones on YouTube, is they don't fucking read. I've mentioned several feminist books that tell you what the plan was and what's going on, but you, they don't even fucking read. They don't even pick up the book. They don't even look up the, wom the woman on YouTube that actually says it. I actually played the video with the woman saying it. But you want to cling to this fantasy and then get pissed off when the fantasy doesn't come true. Donovan Sharp just played one about the 47-year-old woman that thinks she looks fabulous and she's looking for a husband. That she's done well in her career. He just actually said it. The further you go up, the less likely you are to get married. And that's what they said about, black, especially black women that are educated. The more educated they are, the less likely they are to get married. And the statistics bear that out. It's not something that's not true. Now, it used to be that white women had a particular advantage because the white men were actually protected assets. So it made sense to marry a woman that's at or above their level. It made more sense. She can't take you whole hog and divorce rape you if we're about equal. But as this economy grinds up white men, number one, and number two is the laws have shifted as far as female divorce, even the white men are, are actually abandoning it. They're actually saying that 80% of millennials probably will never get married. I don't know how true that is, but so far, so good. Now, Liz Mundy wrote a book called The Richer Sex uh, back in 2011, 2012. This is like seven or eight years ago. She talked about female breadwinners. In fact, she gave a statistic right up front about what they called equity. And the feminist, or the feminist agenda had achieved what is one of one of its desires, its goals, is to have equity, especially after the um, recession in 2008, 2009, where a lot of working class men were losing their jobs. And even some of the ones at the top were losing their jobs. One third of the uh, households were led by women. If we're talking about a two parent household, the two party household, and one third of them were actually uh, led by women as far as financially, they were breadwinners. One third was equal and one third was actually led by men. That is what they call equity, folks. That's balance. That's what the feminists were shooting for. So the environment that you have, the Judge Joe Brown just read, is something they have been talking about for the last 10 years, even amongst the white feminists. This is intentional. This is intentional. And going forward, Guess what? White women and black women are after going, just going to have to do one of two things. Either sit the fuck on the sidelines and take your 12 to 5 penis to get your rocks off. Or you're going to have to accept the reality and woman up and become a breadwinner. That $100,000 woman and that $40,000 guy is by design. It's not an accident. It's not the dude that's not stepping up. This is a design. This is a planned society they planned this 50 years ago it's in the policy it's in the literature why do you think they always promote women over men to promote equity now equity to women means what that i'm gonna find a 50 50 what relationship if you listen to women, they don't want a 100-0 relationship. They want a 50-50 relationship. I hear it all the time. I want a partner. I want a 50-50 relationship. That's what they've been taught. What they didn't realize what equity actually meant. Equity means that a third of the women, just like they said, a third of the women, maybe half the women, are going to have to be breadwinners. So just like the $100,000 guy takes a $40,000 woman or a no-dollar woman, in the past, they had to take on the patriarchal role of doing it about setting up a household. In this egalitarian, gynocentric atmosphere, society, guess what's going to have to happen? A $100,000 woman is going to have to find a $40,000 guy that's, to, that's supportive male so that they can make a household. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So all this complaining about, I can't find a man on my level, you're not supposed to find a man on your level. You're supposed to date down. That's the whole idea of pushing you up. If, the, if they wanted you to 
marry up or continue to marry up, they don't, they would have no need to elevate you to educate you. There's no need to have a hundred thousand dollar woman or two hundred thousand dollar woman. There's no need to have her. Because society won't work that way. Very difficult to be hypergamous with three part three percent of the population, especially when men tend to t marry down. Men don't marry for money. Men marry the woman that has the qualities that he wants for a wife. He gets in a relationship with the woman that he wants to be with because of the qualities that she has, not because of the money that she has. In fact, that woman making $100,000 a year, being with a guy that makes 40, she's actually lucky. Because 95% of the guys that make $40,000 a year and sees a woman that makes $100,000 wouldn't even approach her. And half the guys that make $100,000 a year themselves don't approach her either. I can't tell you how many guys at that level talk about the women in the class, especially the black ones, how contentious their relationship is with, their, with the 92 octanes. It's a contentious relationship. At the end of the day, and this is where I'm gonna get a little preachy here. At the end of the day, it's about making a household and being happy. Now, if happiness is to you, for a, for a woman making hundred thousand dollars a year, is to take trips every once in a while, drive a big body Benz, and have a fairly large house, and that's what you want while you're taking your Xanax and your other prescriptions to keep you sane while you're in this male-dominated uh, atmosphere, with no husband and family to come home to. Now, if that makes you happy then by all means, boo, do you. Just like a man that leads with his money. You're gonna get taken advantage of if you lead with your money. It's the quality of the person that you're supposed to be marrying or supposed to being with because that's really the reason that you be with the dude. You don't need the money. If you if you are a $20,000 a year woman and you're struggling, I understand, you need the money. You need the $100,000 a year guy because a $100,000 a year guy doesn't need the money. All he needs is a woman that will get on his agenda and make a life with him. Men use their mo their wealth and their money as a carrot. Black women are using their money and their wealth as a stick. If you use your wealth and money as a stick, guess what's going to happen? People are going to run the other way, which is a reason why most black women that at that level are not married. Men don't pick women for their money. You can have a PhD, you can make be making $200,000. And all those men that are in your range and above you are gonna pick somebody else because they don't pick people because of money. They pick people because of their attitude, of their quality of their character. Even guys that are select, as we say, the upwardly, upward, five to ten percent of guys that do have the wealth there's a reason that they don't pick you they go back they go downward that's to, to actually pick more agreeable women if you're a 92 octane and you make a hundred thousand dollars a year or more and you haven't been picked there's a reason you haven't been picked because you don't qualify money is not a qualifier for a woman money is more of a hindrance for a woman to get a man why? Because if she's in a provider role, she's not being a provider. She's looking for a provider when you're already in that role. If you're going to accept the mantle, you're going to accept the role, you got to you got to play your part. So it's natural for that $100,000 a year woman to get a $40,000 a year guy because somebody has to be home. If she's going to have babies, she's going to have kids. After she drops them, she's going to go back to work. She's going to go back to her career. What's going, who's going to be at home with the kids? Who's gonna have time for the kids if you have this high-powered career? Huh? Exactly. Somebody's gotta be home. Everybody can't make $100,000 a year in a household. Secondly, dudes that are above a certain level pick youth and beauty. Guy that's 35, 40 years old is not gonna pick a 35, 40 year old woman if he's a man of means. If he's, if he's the top 5%, just like Kevin says, I'm picking a woman there's no no older than 26 years old. He's not gonna pick a 30-year-old woman, a 35-year-old woman. He's gonna pick a woman that's 26, 
25, 24, because he can afford it. Because at his level, if he's Manju Octane and he's 35, 40 years old, basically sex is free. He ain't gotta spend no money, sex is free. If if a dude's over 30 years old and he's making $100,000 a year, sex is free. Because there ain't not that many people at his level. And if women aren't gonna date down, there's no competition. Why should he spend for sex? Especially when most of the women, I don't care what, uh, either, other than the upper reaches, which is the 100 octane women, most women are four, fives, and sixes. Most women are four, five, and six. And the upper guys in the upper class picks eight, eight, nines, and tens. And if you make $100,000 and you're not at eight, nine, or 10, you're not gonna get picked. Seven is basically doing what? You're barely creeping in. But if you're four, five, or six, and you just happen to be educated, making $100,000, you better go get your $40,000 a year guy or be alone. Because if you were that eight, nine, and 10, you'd been picked already. So about uh, that black woman that had been crying their blues for 50 years about the same doggone thing. I can't find a man at my level. Boo, stop crying. These are the men that you have. Either you get with them or you get gone. A sort of mating is getting ready to get real in a minute. And the only reason that it hasn't gotten real is because black men are still stuck with black women. Psychologically, what happens when that goes away? At the upper level, the reason that these black women are not getting $100,000 a guy because 30% of them have already bailed. They're gone. They left. Another 30% have already checked out. As far as the relationship is concerned, they've checked out. And the few that are left to really do anything or really be with you, they're picking women that are not even in your class. They're, they're going down a little further down. They're picking them $40,000 a year women that are educated. There's plenty of $40,000 a year women that are educated. The Issa Rays of the world, if you will. And the Mollies are stuck with chasing somebody else's husband. So as far as black women can't not being able to find men on their level, tough luck. Go talk to your mama, go talk to your grandma because they didn't prepare any men for you. Go talk to them. And what's gonna happen to the next group of women, the next generation of black women, they're gonna have even less because guess what's happening? These mamas here aren't preparing enough uh, black men for the next level either. Black women, your low key hatred of your men is catching up with you. It has caught up with you. And this is the reality that you're gonna have to face. The past is never dead and buried and it's never even passed. And if you don't learn from the lessons of history, you're doomed to repeat it. Same with the men. If you wanna fall into this lie, fall into this paradigm, fall into this false dichotomy, bruh, go do you. If that's the hill that you wanna die on, go die on it. If you wanna go die on that hill, go die on it. I can't tell any man what hill to die on. You gotta pick your own hill. Cause at the end of the day, it's your life, bruh. At the end of the day, it's your life. And if you wanna die on that hill in this economy for a woman, do you. But with that, I'm gonna jump off of here. This is BGS out and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.